Hello friends, it's Scrappy Kathy with um, this week's Mixed Media Frenzy. And for this week, it was my turn to choose a sketch. So I chose one that was kind of haunting and almost even morbid. Um, I don't know what the story is behind it, but the photo of the little girl kind of, you know, took me by surprise. The uh, title, You're in My Prayer, um, obviously touching. Um, but what I tried to concentrate on was the design. I, I believe this is a canvas and it's just sitting on a on a background not not mounted on a back this background so i'm going to do mine so that it on watercolor paper torn edges on a background that is somewhat uh, scratched up and scarred up like this one um i'm gonna the design elements that uh kind of stand out to me are this strong vertical line from the very top of this canvas part down to the bottom uh, the very dimensional elements, there are metal elements and glass elements and, and really di heavily dimensional flowers, pearls, uh, all kinds of things. Plus the mixed media behind all of that are these dots in this kind of crisscross with the top being to the left of this vertical element and the bottom being to the right of that same vertical element. Um, the embellishments are on a diagonal, uh, each corner there and kind of sneaking up there. You've got the dots on the back, then you've got this stamp that's, uh, it kind of looks like a honeycomb or, or something, a smaller, uh, either dot or stencil or a stamp or stencil, and then some, um, kind of splatters all over, um. And I really like the words here. I'm going to try to accomplish something similar to that. So let me tell you the story of how everything got chosen for it. Okay, knew I wanted some dimensional flowers, so I took my box of flowers here and kind of went through feeling and touching till I found something dimensional. I just found another one till I felt found something that wasn't flat. <laughs> and these are kind of in a mess. I pulled things from various places um, and kind of stuck them in this box, and I'm committed to trying to use them up. So, after pulling everything that was dimensional, I came up with these flowers and realized that what was kind of forming here was a color palette and I didn't expect that it's not what I what I was going for particularly but I as you can see what kind of emerged was a sort of purple color palette there's that and and there's this black these two really dark purple silky flowers this silky flower, and then there's this green. So there's purple and green. And I, I thought, okay, I also have these little rosettes that I used to love to glue into uh, other floral arrangements. I haven't done that in years. And I have little containers separated by color uh, probably seven or eight of those, but these have are kind of a lavender color, so I thought I might work those in as well. So that's where the color palette came from. Then I, I saw the metal, the metallic elements, and I went through, I have a couple containers, and I'm not even going to tell you the I'm not even going to show you this one too much. This is one container that I actually painstakingly divided. These are the very, why not show you, the very small metallic elements. It's where brads and um, just all kinds of things are, are located. And I had them separated into categories that made sense. And right before Calvin Ball last year, um, a little bit less than a year ago, I dropped it all on the floor. So this is, I just picked stuff up and tossed it back in there. 
and I'm going to dump it all into a bowl and then divide it while watching television tonight. That's my commitment for the day after I finish filming this. So I went through this. These are my larger metallic elements, and I kind of had them divided by category. These are sea creatures. These are travel images, um, kind of clips, and some some more like paper clip type things, the orange paper clips you've probably seen before. These are some Tim Holtz um, door holders that I use for covers of mini books, you know, just stuff. So I pulled these out. This branchy thing I thought might make a nice um, bit of a, a vertical element, maybe one of these elements kind of going up above the photo there. Uh, I uh, sadly don't have two, but I thought maybe down below I could use something like this. And we'll see, it's pink and it's got kind of maroon dots in there. Not sure how that'll work. This I like and it's kind of fits with the theme, but that color may be wrong and I don't know that I'm willing to take the time to alter that. I've got this, which is um, uh, ha one half of a pair of earrings. I lost the other half, and they were kind of heavy anyway. They're gorgeous. I love them. Um, so I thought I might try to work that in somehow. I've got miscellaneous other pieces. I've got this. A uh, bejeweled one, a little kitty cat, and she loves cats. And I've got this little kind of lavender one, maybe one of the first embellishments I ever had, came in a basket of uh, scrap supplies from Sam's Club, maybe 2006 vintage. So it's also got this, uh, it's lavender on the outside, it's got a pink word chic on it. And since what we're kind of making the page about, I guess I ought to show you the photo. Anyway, that's my collection. I'm gonna put the larger box away. Put the larger flowers away. I've got my a uh, collection of metallic stuff to choose from. I've also pulled this uh, kind of purple word, happy, from my um, Bramble Fox supplies. And this is also a Bramble Fox element. I thought maybe having the uh, something, you know, uh, 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 this film strip kind of off to the side nestled under the photo might be, uh, might look good. Oh, uh, okay. So here's the photo, and I'm going to show you the original photo is this one that you may have seen online. It's a photo that my son took with his brand new iPhone 11, that, and he used the uh, portrait mode so that it kind of fuzzed all the mess in the kitchen uh, behind her, and it really kind of backlit the photo, so it gives her face sort of a glow. And she's wearing her Love Your Melon beanie. And they're, these are given out by, um, I guess, locally, Kennesaw State College up in Kennesaw, Georgia, makes the rounds to uh, ch the children's hospitals. And they give these out to um, yeah, cancer patients who've lost their hair due to chemo. So I wanted to kind of go with the haunting black and white sort of look of the photo here. So I filtered it with um, Prisma, an app on my phone, and the particular filter I chose made it mostly black and white, but with a little bit of kind of purplish red, and the grays in it are kind of purplish. I don't know if you can kind of see there in the light what I'm talking about. If you don't see it, that's okay because I see it and it's going to my album. <laughs> so, it, so that kind of led to, um, let me put this back so that that's my, I kind of want to follow that um, to make sure that I'm getting the, the right impression, if you will. Okay, so First thing I'm going to do, which is going to set the tone for everything else, 
I'm going to tear the edge edges on this photo. It's I printed it at larger than three by four with the idea that I could tear the background so that the result would be in the neighborhood of three by four, although that's not a requirement. I kind of don't want to lose this part down at the bottom. Okay, so there, that's gonna work. And that's going to go up on a very thick piece of foam. I'm going to cut this, and that that's going to give us a lot of room to tuck dimensional things around it. So, let's see, is that right? Yeah. And I may cut it a little bit smaller because I may want to tuck a little bit more. Okay. I'm afraid this video is going to be a little bit long because I'm kind of starting from scratch here. Okay, this is going to be the white paper or the canvas look, and this is gonna be the background. And I'm going to tear this canvas as well. And what this is is very um, heavy watercolor paper, and it's textured. So it kind of will have a bit of a, a canvas type look to it. And what I'm trying to do is give myself enough room to do the, the embellishing that is in the original. And I will just say this about tearing. Photo paper tears really nicely. Okay. I'm good with this. Um, I think with my photo there, I've still got room to do all of the, um, all the mixed media there. So let me do the background. Uh, I have an idea here. Now that I know kind of, I've got a couple inches all around that I can do. Let me put it in this way. That I can do the background. I'm using a couple of distress oxide colors and I'm intentionally, this is a textured piece of paper. It is by Authentique. I guess I need to cut that. Um, where's my trimmer? Okay, I didn't think I would use a trimmer on this page, but I need to cut the branding strip off. Um, there's a little bit of very subtle kind of um, distressing that's already going on on the page. This is from uh, 2013. It's called Forewarn, and I think it's a Halloween line. So I'm going to go with this. There's a little bit of a wrinkle down right in here, but again, I'm not going to let that worry me a whole lot. Okay, what I want to do is with my Distress Oxides, and I've chosen Dusty Concord for the purplish color and Forest Moss. Both should not show up terribly. Ah, oh, this actually, as I have it under the light, has a very, very, very subtle grid pattern. So that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna kinda just do some some just kind of pat the the pads on there and let me somewhat rub them in so that they're really kind of taken down and I after I get it all put together I can kind of go back and uh, make this a little more subtle. And I may spray some water on my fingers. I'm not really prepared to go full mixed media on this, so not a lot of, um, of messy, wet stuff. But of course, I, 
wouldn't be able to do a mixed media page without getting my fingers. Okay, so there's a lot, a little bit of subtle stuff going on there. And because the distress oxide has that, um, oh, that, ox it does the oxidation, by doing a little bit of water, Okay, so I'm letting it have some square um, spots around because it, um, when it comes into contact with water, that that oxidation, oxidizing occurs. Oxidation, I suppose, is a good enough word, and so it'll kind of show up. There'll be some contrast with this gray paper. Now the purple is blending with the green. And for purposes of this page, because there's gonna be so much else going on, I don't think that's gonna be a bad thing. Okay, so let's just try it. Yeah, that's that looks similar enough. Now, what I'm going to do next is kind of try to put in some very subtle, um, stamping that I'm going to do the large circles in the moss green and kind of do some repetitive stamping in and around there. Um, so there. And then I'll do, I have these little small circles on the other side, little dotty things. So I'm gonna do those in the purple color, the dusty concord, and I'll kind of overlap them. And what I'm going by here, what gave me the idea was this little thing, and I think that's actually part of the trademark, but I thought it would kind of look nice. Um, and I'm not gonna oxidize these stampings. Okay, that's done. Now let's work on the white part. Okay. With the white part, I'm gonna use these same, oh, what those stamps are, are Vicki Booten stamps, and I forget which collection this is, but this is what the, the total package looks like, and it's blue, so that may be um, all the good things. Uh, there's some little triangles here and some other things which I may end up using on the main white page, and also these kind of um, watercolor smear marks. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside, and we're going to go with this guy. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is use a stencil. I have, in the stenciling, there's this big, uh, big dot, and then there's the smaller kind of honeycomb-ish looking things, and then all these other things, and it seems to me there might be some floral stuff going on in there somewhere too. So I'm going to do the floral first. This is a set of Vicki Booten. Gosh, that's not the one I wanted to do. Here we go, we'll go with this. Um, what's giving me that, the idea that this is the right thing is I like these the kind these leaves like this floral has. So I'm thinking that's my way of paying homage to that. So I'm, I think it's kind of right in this area that's going to be slightly to the left and below the area where they're not going to be any, um, I, I'm going to have my flower clusters here and here. So this is just going to be stamping and inking and, and stenciling right in there. So I'm going to do some of this and I'll start it out somewhat, um, light-handed, shall we say. I'm not going to 
wet that a whole lot. Now I'm gonna use the let's see over here in this set I've got two sets of stencils here and here's the first one I'm gonna use from this set. This has the dots similar to what's in there and I remember that I want my vertical line in fact I may use my thing here to kind of draw my vertical line and that's a vertical line and I'm gonna have some stamping here to the left of it or some uh, stenciling and some here to the or to the left of that and here to the right of the line over here so I I've kind of got that in as a as a guideline but let me do, this is going to be, okay, let me kind of do this a little bit wonky there. I'm going to use the same pouncer some of these are darker and some lighter. I'm going to use the same pouncer that I used on the green and it's I'm I'm expecting it to somewhat dull the um, the purple kind of tone it down a bit. Brown it down and if you will because they're not um, they're kind of halfway complementary colors on the on the color wheel. Okay, so we've got that, and now I'm going to do this uh, kind of the horizontal band here, and I'm going to go all the way out to the torn edge. I'm going to let that one be sort of light, and I'm going to maybe turn it this way so that what I have over here are a little bit smaller circles. Again, going all the way out to the torn edge. Okay, so those, that's kind of a crisscross. We will kind of get rid of that um, look. Let me kind of correct some of it right here. I don't really want that to look quite so obviously a crisscross. Okay, so that's done there. Now I'm going to take my another stencil and do something that will stand in for this little honeycomb part. I, I'm not going to take it literally. I'm going to do Again, using the same stencil that I, or same pouncer that I used with the purple. Okay, put that there, and that's gonna kinda show up behind some of the embellishments. I'm gonna do another one down a little bit lower, and I'm gonna go right over the purple, and you can tell me later whether you think that was a good idea. Um, let's see, there's a little bit of that. It's I'm going to actually do that in purple down here because I want it to go over that floral area that I did in green. So let me go here. Let me make sure all of this. I tend during these, and I know those of you that watch regularly know that I have a little bit of a problem with that. If I bring it closer, um, so that I can see, it often gets it out of your viewing range. And just for those of you who've asked, um, I have purchased a an overhead lighting um, setup, and I've paid for it. It just has never been shipped, and I can't get the company to respond to me. So. I may have learned a hard lesson 
about ordering things that I see on Facebook and Instagram without recognizing you know, the company name. Okay, I'm going to put that aside. I'm gonna get these little um, stamps, the plus signs, and these little circular things. And these I'm gonna stamp in black. I'm thinking that with these two colors I have going on, it's getting a little too, eh, how do I, I'm not sure. There's not enough black. So I'm just adding some black. I've got the plus signs, three plus sign thingies. Let's see, where else do I need some stuff? Maybe right kind of here and here and here. And I'll do another, let's see, kind of right in here where the, and again, some of the physical embellishing may cover up a lot of this, but I'm done with stamping and stenciling. I'm ready now to, actually I say that, let me get some black stamping done on here. Again, it'll be subtle, but that's kind of what you want in the very background. Put this kind of down there, and I'll go here and do something there to kind of look like it's in a cluster, and you may not be able to see this very well, and that's kind of the point. It's not meant to be very outstanding, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to just mount this on the This will get mounted directly on the background. Or, or do I want, no, you know what? I want it on foam. And you may laugh at my um, leopard skin print foam. I bought some foam for the kids in tiger stripes <laughs> and leopard spots a few years back for uh, Gage and Ava. And we did some projects with them, but I had some left, and I've just run out of my... This is the last left of my uh, non-leopard skin, or non-animal print foam. Okay, so we'll just kind of tack that down there. Kind of get that. Okay, and I'm going to glue this in, and then we'll start embellishing. And I have lots more stuff than I'm probably going to use. But we'll start layering in the flowers. And I think the largest flower on here should go right up here and I'm seeing that it is gonna need propping up. So let me get some of that thick foam. This is um, extra thick foam. I think I picked it up at you know, just a standard big box craft store. And it's, 
it comes in handy times like this when you really want to elevate something to the level of, of, a, of a, yeah, especially of a photo that's mounted on the same material. Okay, and then I'm going to group some flowers around this, maybe kind of tucked underneath the, um, and that one can go down and tuck underneath the photo. So that's good. And here's where I may, well, definitely I'll use one of these purple silkies. Are you able to see that? That, this flower is much larger than the one in the original, and it may throw the proportions off a bit. I'll do this, and then I can do some of the metal elements in there. So that may be all the flowers I do there. This black one is also larger than I wanted. This one is kind of, it's close enough to being the wrong color that I could exclude it, but I really like it. And I want to see if it can work. What I can always do, or could have done actually, is um, now this black rather than have it stand out as one of the main flowers I can tuck it in underneath the photo and the purple flower Let's see. it's the platform I put it on is not as um, as stable as it should be. Now, to add, so that this kind of looks the same, I, I wanted at least one flower in common between the two clusters. And this purple one is it, and now I'll go tuck in with some liquid glue some of these tiny little purple rosettes. Um, I'll put one here, and then I can put something Metallic. They're kind of, um, oh, what do I say? Whereas there's kind of a grunge look developing, these actually are a bit cute. And so I'm going to maybe try to grunge, get the grunge back by adding some metal. Okay, hopefully you're seeing this that I'm doing. I want to get that right in there, and I think I have room for another one right up in here. Oops, that doesn't seem to want to stick. Um, and as you can see, I've covered up the, um, the little plus sign stamping I had done, so I think I'm going to go back. And add some of that in. I, uh, it's not gonna, it doesn't. Let me do that. Okay, that is okay. So I didn't use this white flower that I found kind of towards the end. And I'm thinking proportionally, it may not need to be there and so let me kind of put it aside and we'll go for the metal stuff okay i've got this branch 
and it has this ring on it. I'm going to use my other, ah, okay. Let me, before I do that, let me test this out, and this may, have me changing my mind about the placement of some of these things. So, let me do that. Okay, I like that, and I'm going to, therefore, move this flower up to here. And I think I'm gonna have the words for my title going across this. Let me get some glue on it and get it drying so that it'll stay in place. Okay, I like, what I like about this is that it joins this upper cluster with this lower cluster. This kind of wraps around this way, and this wraps around this way, and so that's perfect, um, I think. So that's how it's shaping up. Okay, let me get my scissors that I cut metal with. I have two pairs of, well, actually three, but one is a desk, it's on my desk. Okay, this I'm planning to put right here. And I'm going to try to stick it with my Uh, Nuvo glue. I've done metal elements with it before and it's worked fine. So I've got that resting on there. Um, my other piece that I thought I could get some vertical movement with is this one. And it has this ring on it. I'm gonna my fussy cutting scissors. I'm going to try to cut this ring off as well. This one's not cooperating as well. So let's see if it is going to do what I want it to do anyway. It kind of, because I put those flowers in ahead of time, it's really not gonna work so and and I don't like the color I, I am not happy with that okay I've got this earring I'll just cut the the hanging mechanism and that hanging mechanism will show up on a layout at some point this is gonna be tough because that's a, uh, a filigree type surface and it may uh, not stick terribly well, but I'm gonna try it. It seems to be holding in place. Let me get this tiny little thing that says chic. And even though the color's not exactly on target there, I'm gonna kinda put it right here next to these three um, lavender flowers. I'm not gonna lift it up because I'm afraid this will come falling down. And I'm gonna wait, give the glue a chance to get tacky. I'm also going to kind of squeeze this purple word, happy, over into this side because I've got the title words that are gonna go there on that side. Let's see. I may end up doing happy right here. I want it to be white underneath, so that works okay. 
Um, is there anything else in the metal side of things? I've got this little kitty cat. And Ava's a huge fan of kitty cats. So let me see if I can squeeze that in over on the photo strip. Okay, I think that's going to work. Now, for the title, <laughs> I printed these words, Love Your Melon, on the paper that I printed the example. And if you'll notice on the example, these are kind of colored in around the word. So I did, used an open font. I'm going to cut them out in, into strips. And then I'm going to color around the letters with a dimensional purple marker. It's a souffle marker. And I used to use souffle markers a lot in, um, in both scrapping and card making. And I haven't touched my souffle markers, I'm going to say, in a year or more. And I was very surprised when that one worked this morning. I wrote an entry in my planner uh, in it just to make sure it had some life left in it. I'm going to close up my glue, put that aside for the moment. Dropping scissors. Okay, so let's do this. Let me get this on camera so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, Uh, I'm just kind of going around, and it's almost like I'm tracing it, and I'm intentionally letting it be messy. And then I'll kind of fill it out, but leave some white border, and I may cut that down, or I may uh, ink it with black. Um, kind of depends on how well these words show up when it's all said and done. Um, it's just another one of the things I picked up from the sketch that I, I liked and could figure out how to do it. <laughs> Not sure if this is what they did, but thought it would work. And I I love this shade of purple. It kind of goes with some of the flowers we've put on the page. So I hope it turns out nice. Okay, what I think I may do is just go around the very edge of the page, or of the uh, strip, leaving some white showing and but making a line around so that there's something of a a doodled border and when that dries the dimension will kind of pop up and I think that'll look really good if I had my markers with me. I think I have a silver gray, and that might have been nice. I'm going to pick these up using my tweezers and see if they should go. I, I may not put them there. i tell you what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to put some foam behind them. Not the big thick foam and not the orange <laughs> foam. I'm gonna cut some of this black. And there's for love your melon. Okay. 
And let me do this, get that on there. And then I'm going to use some of my, I'm gonna put my liquid glue away too soon. Use it here. Maybe I'll put it just slightly overlapping. Let me get this there. It's beginning to dry, the, um, the souffle marker is, and it's really looking good. I don't know if you can tell the dimension. It kind of takes on a, a glossiness in a way. This is a little bit uh, more lighthearted take on, um, on the original, which, as I said, is kind of somber and maybe even morbid looking. Um, sad, if you will. But I did want to use a fairly close-up photo of Ava. Um, For this and I chose one that's a little bit more upbeat. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, I think I got in everything that I wanted to. I will um, do what I need to to make this uh, flower more stable on its high platform there. I think that's stuck. This is stuck and I think I've got of the look of the original and the, um, the the mood of it if you will uh, maybe a maybe a happier mood and, and, the, and the, I, I'm happy with the color choices so uh, that's mixed media frenzy for this week again I uh, hope you enjoyed the very detailed process and I'll see you next week bye <laughs>